Willkommen zurück in Halle aus unserem Chaos Zone TV Studio. Der nächste Vortrag. Welcome back to the Chaos Zone TV Studio. The next talk is from Honkhase and Egovernante. Egovernante is a project coordinator for digitalization in the district. Uh, she uh, turned out to be the um, Firefighter for the digital fire in uh, July of this uh, last year. Honkase is a cybersecurity consultant. He is also active in the AG Kritis for critical infrastructure. Have fun. Yeah, hi, and schönen guten Abend zusammen. Hi, and great to be here. Thank you for listening. To us, uh, we're going to talk to you a bit about the incident in Landkreis Bitterfeld. Since I've returned to my uh, original duties as CDO, uh, I've often heard, uh, listen, listen to me, uh, or uh, you will end up like them, the administrative district Anhalt Bitterfeld. And uh, it turns out that our incident is uh, more than just an uh, advertisement uh, to for, for your own views. Um, Honkase has uh, introduced me as a constructive voice, and uh, we now have time and nerves for that. So rebuilding Anhalt Bitterfeld, what was happen what has happened on uh, 6th of july a uh, employee uh, saw this uh, screen that you see now on uh, the slide do not touch anything uh, they were uh, personally named very clear statement uh, you know uh, get uh, used to that uh, in public administration but uh, uh, calling it uh, should probably be enough they will take care of it um, the call was at 6.45 and uh, started something that is going to uh, be with us uh, until March 22. So we assume that uh, coded PowerShells uh, shell instructions were uh, executed at around 5 o'clock. The uh, first uh, encryption activity was uh, on the uh, 6th of July at 4.30. On other systems, uh, the encryption started at 6.30. And on all the systems at different times, the security locks and other uh, event locks were cleared. And afterwards, a remote desktop session was closed. Uh, the, the remote desktop protocol was also deleted. So we probably won't be able to um, learn that much uh, in, in the end, uh, because we, we, also, we only know when the session has ended, and we have to assume that the encryption was started manually, because the systems that, where the lockout was complete, they stopped uh, encrypting data. Uh, but we don't have the logs, so it's very hard to uh, tell what uh, activities the attacker did on which systems. The attacker probably uh, moved around the systems and um, cho chose what to do uh, individually. They used PowerShell scripts uh, to install these backdoors. And it can also be said that the encryption was very fast. There was a lot of damage. That means that we had to assume that the whole system is compromised. And that means we have to do a holistic uh, approach. And in the press statement, uh, this is how we uh, told it. Due to an unknown source, there was an infection of, of various servers in the network uh, that led to encryption of no not uh, unspecified number of files. Uh, so we have disconnected all critical systems from the network to prevent a loss of data. And we are in the uh, uh, disaster mode. 
uh, there was a uh, team for um, special events. Oh, uh, I've, I've to talked about that at Stiftung Neue Verantwortung, but uh, from the information, uh, that, um, so the, the, the question is no longer why do we have these disasters, did, uh, had, do, did we have to declare the disaster situation? It was clear that uh, IT would have to be uh, offline for a prolonged uh, time, and it is definitely more than just an everyday um, damage um, situation. So if you uh, look at just the social services, this is going to uh, have an impact uh, on citizens for a long time. Uh, the services for our central IT processes couldn't be um, couldn't be uh, rendered anymore, and we didn't have a backup, or and we weren't sure if the backups we had were also compromised. So that wasn't an option as well. And the declaration of the disaster situation uh, has uh, a lot of consequences, uh, also um, legal uh, implications um, because of we, uh, people couldn't register their cars, we couldn't give them uh, uh, dates for their. So, Let's talk about the uh, administration of the district. The, uh, the social services were the central um, part uh, where people were calling us right away. And the, the task they have is to uh, calculate the social uh, support and uh, also other financial payments. It's very essential to the lives of uh, people's lives, um, also the financial uh, part where they have to calculate and uh, pay the, the, the money. These social and so this also entails the um, services for uh, foreign uh, persons. So there's a lot of uh, things that uh, fall into this. Um, so, for example, uh, endangering kids. And these are all processes that are essentially important for citizens. And they also uh, financially, uh, so they, they also have an existential uh, threat to your uh, financial well being. Also, um, Driver's license, uh, not only cars, but also uh, agricultural uh, transport. Um, and people live, uh, they, they are depending for their livelihood for uh, on, on these uh, licenses. And uh, in the current situation, obviously, the health system is also very important. Preventing um, diseases is obviously in COVID-19 times, it's very uh, up to date now, it's very important. And I don't want to go into further detail, but the uh, district administration has also further tasks that they have to fulfill. They have to do procurement, they have to do announcements, they have to uh, organize the political um, system and they don't stop working. So the first question from the Federal um, uh, Information Security Agency was, do we have uh, an opportunity to participate in the federal elections? Is that a problem? And obviously school administration, a lot of money is being lost uh, when we don't uh, request certain federal funds. Uh, animal health, there's it's obviously critical as well for um, production of food. So if we look at why the disaster situation was declared, we didn't know at that time when we would be able to re-enable uh, our systems and if when we do that the encryption would resume. So this is why we had to buy a new um, network equipment. And normally you are bound by public procurement law. So if you are in public administration, uh, you know how long this may take. 
And currently, when we look at how this could be simplified, in our case, uh, the uh, declaration of the disaster situation enabled us to buy hardware without uh, following the procurement process. So we didn't have to check whether the money is available in, in our uh, plane. Uh, we didn't have to uh, call in the uh, procurement uh, people. And w without accessing the data, uh, it would actually not have been possible anyway. So the, we created a emergency network in three places. And so we could just ad hoc um, ask uh, external companies to do um, support tasks. So every time, uh, so, so everyone who uh, even knew how to spell IT uh, was uh, called into uh, to help us. Uh, other uh, colleagues who were originally uh, in the school administration uh, uh, part of, they were, and I was uh, in in the law department. So uh, when I was declared the technical uh, head of operations, at this point I wasn't alone anymore. Uh, I had a lot of people at my disposal, uh, IT people and uh, people from the uh, administrative processes and the experts in their respective fields. And from day one, I did, uh, uh, didn't call them Sachgebiet uh, IT, but just IT. And uh, are they called IT? I was asked. So this, this was something that we uh, but, uh, were able to, to clarify very quickly. In the first hours and the first days and weeks, um, it was about accessing meeting rooms, uh, communicating with external people, um, getting hardware, uh, accessing people at night, and very uh, uh, profane things like uh, food for employees. And all of that depended uh, in some way on the declaration of the disaster situation. So uh, we're coming to the um, crisis team and incident response. Uh, we, we kind of collided with that already. There's external um, teams that we have to interact with. Uh, the crisis team as uh, they, the decision makers, um, and there were several in-house teams. And so we, we did have some collisions there. The, those that uh, stay longer uh, in the public administration and those that uh, want uh, very fast decisions. And that, uh, leads to behavior uh, and also, uh, there was uh, a new head of the, uh, the administration just three days after declaring the disaster situation, which led to a lot of discussions that wasn't really productive. We, we could uh, could have done without. As someone external, the uh, Ministry of Finances was the, the uh, Federal Information Security Agency. Uh, the Zert Nord was involved, uh, someone from a professor from Hochschule Harz, and everyone was uh, very helpful in their uh, specialty. And the technical uh, team leads one and two, uh, they were involved with the, one was involved with the uh, uh, getting the hardware back to uh, back running and number two was involved with the uh, administrative processes. And even though that sounds like this uh, was involved, uh, that this was interconnected, the, that, that doesn't work because the administration um, works, so uh, they, they keep on working. The telephone worked, fax worked, uh, so and the doors were still open. So people were still uh, requesting stuff from the administration. So I already mentioned that citizens um, had ex existential issues uh, with the uh, district. 
So people maybe bought a car or crashed it. So for some reason they have to uh, remove their registration. That's possible, but um, registering your car is only possible where you live. This is very strict. And this leads to these administrative processes in, in other districts, they, they couldn't help us um, because the uh, data that they needed to, to register a car wasn't uh, there for the other district. And uh, also there's uh, time limits. So uh, if you um, don't react to a, a request, it may lead to um, uh, the um, administration agreeing to it by default. And these lists uh, were flexible in the beginning. So there was a continuous discussion going on between the different directions of the rebuilding effort. And in the meantime, there were quite a few different decisions that had to be made. For example, would the administration go into the cloud? Do we have to involve someone from the workers' council? Do we need to have the forensics team continue to work. There was a question whether we could outsource certain services to um, data center. There was the blackmail letter where we were considering how to go about the money that was involved. And there were a few more challenges that I'll go into later. But let's go back to the organization. There were a few things that changed, Lee, like right after the cut case on the last slide I had. We, we basically pulled together all the IT members from the different organizations. And for example, the, the, administ the, the education administration workers were also involved, as well as the IT security officer had to be um, changed. We didn't create a new position for that. And there were certain restrictions around who who is eligible to be uh, named for that office. So we needed to find someone. There were several people who were interested, but the state is involved in educating those candidates. And we need to change their contracts so that we had to make sure that the things that we that we were asking of them um, that we have the budget for that that um, what we did was within the limits and we were obviously making decisions for the future here that would have a long lasting reach after the the event so this is not just for the short term so we need to implement the IT basic protection. So it's a, a, a terminus technicus in this way. And they need to create it in a way that they can afford later on. And here, we also need to have the political foundation in place for this. Like we, we didn't get any approval for new positions. So the people that we needed, we needed to get permission for. So quickly, let's go over the rebooting of the business processes. This is what we had to say again and again in the beginning. The, there was no, there was no big business to be had here. We needed to make certain that the suppliers knew that, and. It, it was supposed to um, rebuild and not create it separately in a new, and it needed to be reintegrated into the old network. So we also needed to make sure that we utilize the capacity of the providers to the fullest. The good news is after prioritizing a lot, um, this all works again. Let me cut short a little bit. We're coming to the balance sheet or the basically the, the bill that we got in the end. It was roughly two million, quite a bit more than the ransom that they were demanding. 
ETH-Budget But with the planned IT budget that we had for the next year, it have to be covered. So obviously all our planning was for naught and there were obviously a lot of conflicts now between the different um, well, officers within the organization. And we have a trust issue now with regards to the digitalization because a lot of people are now saying, why didn't we just stick to paper? Um, this would have been easier. Now we kind of lost our intranet, which quite a few people are frustrated about. They went to the home office just so they had the technology, like their own private IT because we couldn't provide them any machines and we had to allow them to utilize their private IT to have BYO. And now that they've educated themselves on working this way, it's kind of difficult to go back to the status quo beforehand. We obviously, we weren't in the worst position. We, we got quite a few um, other organizations that reached out and promised aid and helped us out with expertise and um, also with capabilities. Even the, the army helped out. But it also means that now we're kind of responsible or we feel responsible to initiate the knowledge transfer. And we're kind of assuming that we were hit quite at the right moment. We were the first, but we're definitely not going to be the last. And it's paramount that the knowledge transfer is now happening. And on the side, we've already uh, answered so many questions. We've been to conferences. We have been to um, hearings. It's quite obvious that there's a lot of interest. And now I I hand over to Honkase. He he kind of pissed me off so hard that I have to make sure that he also is part of the talk now. Okay. I I just want to be sure that my taxes that I have to pay are put into good hands and to good use, you know. And uh, the the problem with critical infrastructure, especially around uh, state and public sector, is. Is, is a hot topic and you, we've already seen quite a bit of uh, problems in the past here and this is only going to be worse. So the dumpster fire you have on the left is kind of emblematic. So often I have the feeling uh, there's nothing that I can fix, the, we have to burn it all down and then start it fresh. So the question is what do we really need, what we actually truly need to have is a way of cyber resiliency. I'm a cyber grandpa, I'm allowed to say that. We need resiliency for the cyberspace of especially of critical infrastructure and public sector is part of that. The e-governante already said that there, there are actually quite important business processes within the administration that cannot just like uh, stop for a while. We're not just talking about like fun and entertainment. Um, this is this is criminal conduct, and we're we're dealing with gangs of or organized crime here. And what we truly need, how do we how we turn the ship around? How do we get the resiliency that we need? And I definitely want to name the mayors and other um, leading members of the administration. They need to have experience with doing crisis. Let me just throw in Atal, which was, um, there was a flooding this year in Germany that was quite heavy. They they had the same issue. They didn't train for the the problems or the, the, the exercises that they had to do. And then they were surprised by what happened. So training is important. And honestly, we can't have business processes still depending on Windows 98 in 2021. We actually have seen this in Berlin. And it used to be on Windows 98, and even after we looked at it, it still was, and that's a fail. 
So it needs to be digitalized from start to finish for the, and this has to be the goal of the administration. And what we definitely also need, but that is not there yet, is there are just no directives for the public sector. So there's uh, paragraph 8a of the BSI for eight of the critical infrastructure sectors. There are very detailed instructions about what they have to fulfill. And with public sector, it's basically not, there, there's no directives at all. So it's basically open field and everybody can do what they want. Something has to be done around this area. The current government has to do something about that. They have to wake up and put out some security directives that have to be followed. And what we also need are uh, search, so emergency response teams on the county level. We've already, yeah, we've been run over by this kind of attack and it, it's not enough to have like half an, a person working on that full time. That's, they've never been involved with all of these business processes. They don't have the experience. With that little time, you, you cannot do the Europe work. You cannot do the coordination between the different officers. They basically look into the into the um, the rulings and the legislations, and that's that's about it. And they don't even know what they're who they have to interact with. So we need the information collected somewhere. And so this is my passion here. The our, we, we call it the Cyber Hillswag, so the, it's, it's basically like an NGO that would help out in the in times of um, cyber incidents that are affecting the public sector, especially on a large scale, and that help out with transferring information. And we're working together with the um, public as Office of Information Security and together with the Chaos Com Computer Club and we how, we were brainstorming how to get the, um, the volunteers involved and how would we be able to help out when we have a larger cyber incident. Uh, um, the district uh, is uh, offline and uh, will be for many more months. Uh, so what we want to be able to do is uh, be able to uh, uh, to create an ability to act. So what we are planning to do is <clears throat> not to uh, help the critical infrastructure um, people or their financial gains. Uh, or to have uh, production uh, facilities uh, new and stylish. No, it's only about uh, being able to uh, supply critical services to the citizens, which means uh, in public administration that the uh, administrative processes work, that people can contact the offices with their uh, problems and their requests. Uh, that social support is uh, paid every month uh, so that you don't uh, just have to say, well, we just have a ro ransomware problem currently. You can't uh, get uh, your money. That, that, that doesn't work when people really need uh, this uh, support. So improving IT security isn't enough. We will have to do that anyway. We don't have to. <clears throat> but uh, incident response and uh, crisis response is also very important on the basis of volunteer helpers. We do have enough know-how in the community. Uh, if this works on our terms, then we want to. Ha then, then we say we want to help. There's not weird security companies that uh, the uh, federal uh, incidents response team uh, is joining in. Uh, maybe you don't even have to call the army. The army should be the very last, the, the absolutely very last uh, in the chain. Um, we, they, they shouldn't be uh, calculated. They should be. Um, they, they should. In the best case, we we never request the help of the armor, 
army uh, when when the shit hits the fan then we need the army but not in uh, these kinds of situations and this is what the cyber hilfswerk uh, is supposed to uh, be do and this is why i was uh, kind of forced to um <laughs> into this uh, in the uh, expert team and i will uh, try and uh, get this started uh, so we don't have to uh, burn everything down but maybe it's just uh, we have to be very angry all right so we are in the behind the scenes category uh, best of uh, yelling at customers so if anybody uh, didn't it doesn't show up for the lightning talk then i can read for uh, some emails that i've got no it's just a joke uh, there were some situations that um, in their just in the moment uh, when they were happening it was very unbelievable <clears throat> On the one hand, obviously, um, if uh, someone really wants to help, but uh, wanting to help is not necessarily helpful. So if people uh, think that it's a good idea to uh, save uh, USB sticks to uh, uh, files to their USB sticks and take them home with them as a backup and then bring them back, this is going to be a problem. Um, what we had several times is IT people were asked uh, the, some computers were supposed to be uh, brought uh, online again and uh, it's bad if you're not asking the people responsible and uh, that leads to uh, computers not being available because they are somehow in use now and it was also interesting in the uh, technical leadership team whoever was it like so after 10 minutes uh, uh, someone uh, turns on uh, the microphone and you just say no uh, it's technically not possible so even if we really want the administrative district to go back online there's some the order that we have to um, keep to. Um, some people wanted to uh, use that um, as an opportunity to uh, use digitalization projects. Um, and we can't start with uh, an empty uh, license plate database because otherwise people will end up with uh, duplicate license plates that's not possible due to liabilities and we did have the ceos talking um, and uh, one was really unhappy because uh, we were asking technical details and and he said well uh, i'm going to uh, tell on you um, and uh, you're not going to uh, get any more um, companies uh, and even though these uh, decisions were made based on technical expertise um, things like people were uh, wanted to really uh, tell us how to uh, how they can migrate to the cloud which is really not helpful because this uh, is not what we're going to do and uh, losing the trust uh, is uh, one of the problems we have there so if you have uh, multiple uh, partners then uh, when we were when they were talking about their uh, uh, how they they would uh, continue their work uh, they didn't want us uh, present so it's very important to have an IT project manager uh, in house and the uh, district uh, just like any other office uh, needs to have this kind of personnel uh, if we don't want to be tricked and no uh, computing center wanted to have our data don't don't uh, send us our data we, we were doing all the services uh, so it's also great when uh, a company uh, tells you well uh, you you might have we, we talked about this price but now it's uh, three times more expensive 
and they don't talk to the IT people, but directly to the head of the district. Um, they were uh, talking to the male people. There was outside. There's the, the the sniper that will take off, uh, take you offline the moment you go back online. And with the female colleagues, they were saying something like, uh, the, "The stalkers are waiting for you." So very weird. And when we others say, said, uh, "Don't use open source software uh, because hackers use open source software." These are the people that attacked you. Very uh, difficult uh, way of framing it. But, but uh, you may also have luck. Um, for example, you get um, cheap uh, office. You get seven managed services uh, for ten percent of the prices. Uh, in the first year and the kickoff, they wanted to have a TV team present, which we didn't accept. And then uh, the uh, service providers that we were working with for many years, uh, they were uh, we were asking for for their offer. So it's great if they. Uh, Put the uh, licenses right uh, onto their offer as well. So the administrative district isn't the victim of the attack. Uh, in the uh, expert team, I believe we have a great way to, um, and we also have a research project. So we now have the awareness, and there's a research project being launched, uh, and we do have digital Gemini's. Um, and as uh, an open source uh, um, play, so th that's the good thing about this catastrophe. Um, the administrative district, the offices are really uh, due to do their homework. So this is now the time for questions. Genau, fragt uns Dinge, es drohen Antworten. Ja, sehr, sehr schön, vielen Dank. Thanks for that. There are a lot of questions already. So, a lot of the questions revolve around if you can divulge some more details of the attack. We don't know that much, unfortunately. Because the log files uh, were deleted as well, we can't really give that much in terms of details. And in general, uh, with incidents response, if you try to uh, help the uh, victims after a ransomware attack, the attackers, again, this is organized crime. This isn't uh, just your... Uh, general uh, criminal. They uh, enter these systems and they uh, check uh, exactly how much you can afford to pay. And the administrative district, uh, they uh, also leaked uh, 200 megabytes of data um, to tease them into, well, maybe you want to pay something. Um, and they will uh, actively destroy online backups or encrypt them as well. So for a long time, access uh, uh, credentials such as SSH keys um, are being uh, looked for. Uh, they are emptying the syslog on Linux uh, systems. And when everything has gone and most of it has been encrypted, you can only uh, look for what's remaining. There's a lot of uh, attack vectors that could have been successful, which one, it, in effect, it's almost irrelevant. You want to be able to rebuild. You want to be able to provide the critical services again. So it's often the case that you can't really tell exactly. And we also assume that the attacker has been in the system since the beginning of the year. And we also know of a much larger data leak. That doesn't improve things, but that's how it is.
ist bekannt, ob tatsächlich Daten abgeflossen sind. So, is it actually known if data has been extracted? Daten abgeflossen, ja. Yes, data have been uh, copied off 200 megabytes leak, but they have been copied off a lot more. There's been a statement, so 62 gigabytes of data bait were copied. We don't know exactly what these 200 megabytes were leaked, and obviously we know what it is. There's uh, protocols from the... 62 gigabyte uh, verschütt gegangen, and uh, da, da muss... And uh, all in all, 62 gigabytes were lost. Uh, that is actually pretty... Uh, not that much. Uh, we also know of other incidents where terabytes uh, are copied. So you're still in reconstruction. So one of the questions is... Is there data and material that has been lost forever? The, all of the mail server data by the uh, environmental office from, from one of the uh, locations in Bitterfeld and also the internet has uh, is gone. And everything else, we are still looking into what data might be missing. We know that uh, data from the environmental office uh, is gone and also the complete mail server. And also the internet is no longer there. Okay. Uh, uh, eine andere Frage. Mehr um, another question. Uh, how big was the ransom demand? If that's something you can divulge. No, we actually published this. Uh, was 500,000 euro. In Monero. In Monero. So relatively cheap. Other attackers request much more money. But they didn't get any, so. Okay. Uh, Honkase, du hattest, uh, Honkase, you gave some recommendations wo Freiwillige, where volunteers could help out in the public sector so they don't have to bring in the army. Was reaching out to the military actually called for or is there something that is being done so this doesn't happen again in the future? Well, whether it's called for, Igovanante can probably uh, judge better than I. I don't know the details. Uh, I haven't been involved in the internal uh, uh, things regarding this incident. She may think it's uh, appropriate. But my position is that uh, this doesn't happen again, or this isn't just a default to call the Bundeswehr. Um, but this is why the AG Kritis uh, wants to create this uh, cyber relief service, the cyber Hilfswerk. And when a critical infrastructure is uh, attacked, then we from the community help as volunteers and we uh, come there and repair the uh, service, the critical service, together with the uh, people who do that professionally. And then we leave once it's done. This is the aim. So we don't have to call the army again. They should only be the uh, most extreme cases. And okay, so I think that it was uh, that was the case. It was the first case. It shouldn't be standard, but in that moment we weren't able, uh, from a technical perspective, to help ourselves. So the uh, technical uh, services that they rendered for us. As of today. Uh, Almost all of the districts are on this uh, le uh, level of preparedness. Oh, I hope it, it prepares. Yeah, hope dies last. Schön. Uh, eine andere Frage. Thanks. So, how far are you along in the reconstruction process and how are you going to improve on the situation? But this uh, starts with the uh, internal agreements, uh, with the awareness, uh, the IT security officers, um, and we also have multi-level security concepts uh, that doesn't uh, allow workstations, uh, desktop workstations to be uh, 
you have all the administrative uh, privileges, the uh, passwords uh, uh, expire at some time. And uh, regarding the rebuilding, the Active Directory is restored. The administrative processes will go online one after the other, and these different offices will be able to have their uh, desktop PCs uh, back, back online now, and they hardened. Uh, so we have four or six offices where every uh, employee has their own uh, PC now, uh, and not just a general uh, emergency PC. And do you also use uh, hacker software such as open source? Oh, yes, we do. Very good. So a particular uh, a question about the Active Directory. When you did the forensic analysis, was there a golden ticket attack that you saw there or? I cannot say that. I don't know. I can say something different regarding Active Directory. So we had to look up uh, whether every employee uh, is actually, uh, I mean, every uh, entry to the Active Directory is actually uh, related to a real employee or if uh, someone new showed up during the attack. And that was the first thing that we did. And it this took a lot of time. Um, so uh, we had to uh, kind of created a list of all the colleagues. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it, it grew historically this list, so we had to check it. Did you have any backups, maybe even external? No, I mean, yes. Uh, some uh, uh, processes had uh, backups and we didn't know it uh, sometimes. So the privacy officer was uh, kind of irritated sometimes. So there were backups, but uh, not all of them were in external uh, computing centers. Uh, and now we have to check, uh, check them for compromise. Uh, so we assume that 80 to 90% of our data will be re restored. Yeah. with a lot of manual work, of course. And I just want to add, backup is nice. Restore is a lot uh, better. Everybody uh, says backup, but nobody wants backup. Everybody wants restore. And you only get that when you have a very structured backup concept with grandfathering models, with uh, rolling backups, with offline backups. You have some 160 processes, yeah. If you have 160 historically grown uh, administrative processes, it isn't just one backup on one tape and you put this uh, into your bank locker uh, and then you have uh, this, this golden medium that you bring back when the attack happens. That, that That's just how it happens. So a backup concept that includes restore within a acceptable time frame is a very complex uh, task. Okay, I can imagine that this is in the rebuilding I can imagine that this is going to be part of the rebuilding process and the improvement. Yeah, sure. Yes, yes absolutely. Exactly. When we only look at the uh, state we have now, uh, we have administrative processes that aren't in the target system, so we're now uh, uh, getting data that we'll have to re-import when the final system is back in place. Thank you. I just wanted to add the uh, fun with your devices. This is part of the chaos, right? Okay, thanks a lot for your insights into the public sector and the digitalization that you're facing. Thank you, Honkase and Igo Venante. Thanks a lot and until next time. Right, so thank you for your attention, also from the translation booth. You just heard the talk, Rebuilding the Administrative District Anhalt-Bitterfeld by Egu Vanante and Honkhase, was translated to you by...
Kaste and Tribut. That's me. If you have feedback for us, please use the hashtag C3Lingo. Bye.